it might tie one hand behind our back in negotiations. If a country wants to include an investor state dispute settlement clause, it may end up complicating future trade deals. Where's the principle that we shouldn't be giving special rights to corporations to sue sovereign governments in this day and age? If I've done anything in this place, Acting Deputy President, it's stand up to excessive corporate power. That's what this TPP is. It's a blueprint for excessive corporate power. And I must say I was very disappointed that the Leader of the Opposition, Bill Shorten, in a speech just two weekends ago, made a comment that there's never been a better time to be a multinational corporation. He was saying that sarcastically, yet it seems though Labor is going to vote for this legislation and give them exactly what they want. They have spent 13 years trying to get this legislation through this parliament and other parliaments. 13 years of opposition all around the world to the TPP, uh, not just here in Australia but elsewhere. Here's some of the conclusions from the report on ISDS. Litigation using ISDS has proliferated in recent times, and this is likely to increase into the future. ISDS clauses have outlived their usefulness and now are under review in a number of countries in trade negotiations, including 10 countries in Latin America, South Africa, Indonesia, India and the European Union. In fact, the new NAFTA negotiations have excluded ISDS between US and Canada, so they are backtracking on the use of ISDS. There is no evidence anywhere to show that ISDS clauses have any economic benefits for trade or investment. However, the risks of using them are clear and supported by evidence and numerous case studies. Trade deals are changing from historic market access trade considerations to facilitating foreign investment. Laws and policies in a wide range of areas, including public health, patents on medicines, the environment, food labelling, internet use, privacy, local media content, all these are in the TPP. As I said earlier, nearly every aspect of life in this country is going to be impacted by this trade deal. And yet, now is when Parliament gets to look at it at the very end of 13 years of negotiations. This makes ISDS and the inclusion of ISDS more dangerous. There was strong evidence presented to the inquiry that ISDF safeguard clauses can and have been reinterpreted and overturned through the arbitration process. Lastly, but most importantly, Parliament has no oversight or control over the inclusion of ISDS in trade negotiations, except we can reject the entire trade bill before us today because of the inclusion uh, of ISDS clauses. Well, Acting Deputy President, I've only got a few minutes left to go before question time. But let me say this. You might learn something, Senator Williams. I'll take that, take that interjection. You might think this is about agricultural exports. You might think this is about selling more commodities to the world. Well, have a very close look at the fine detail. This is, about, this is a deal about trade and investment. And what do we mean by investment? We mean direct foreign investment, which by definition is significant investment, significant investment between countries. And of course, the companies that conduct significant investment are by their nature large, usually large, multinational corporations. The exact 300 or so businesses that had exclusive access to the negotiations on the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, negotiations that civil society were excluded from, negotiation senators that we were excluded from, negotiations that I could get no detail no detail from Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade officials at numerous estimates over recent years about these negotiations. This is it. You can take it. Lock, stock and two smoking barrels. And the US has pulled out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. But in case you didn't notice it, there's 22 clauses that have been suspended in the TPP-11. 22 clauses that if the US rejoins, including clauses related to monopoly pricing of medicines and pharmaceutical companies, 22 clauses that will be reopened if the US was to join the TPP. And what is the process we have to go through if the US wants to join the TPP? Well, so far we have very little illumination on that point. I'd ask senators to think very closely about whether you want to sell your sovereignty down the river to a trade deal, a so-called trade deal—I know you would, Senator Colbeck, 
<laughs> order, Very Senator Wish Wilson. It being 2 p.m., we will interrupt. Interrupt. You'll be in continuation. 